everyone, this is Kate O'Connor reporting for AbWeb from AirVenture 2021. There have been several interesting announcements at the show this year, including a partnership between Avidyne and Dedalion that's looking at developing AI-based avionics vision systems. Here are Dedalion's Luke Van Dyke and Anna Ternova to tell us more about it. Uh, we are presenting uh, the Dedalion VXS, the visual guidance uh, system, visual situational awareness system that we've developed. Uh, we have partnered with Avidyne, who is in the booth opposite of us, um, to develop the hardware and we've focused the last five years on developing uh, AI software to do the things that a human pilot does with his or her eyes, namely to see where you are, see where you can fly, where others are flying that you should not fly into, and see where you can land, see where the runway is that you do want to fly into. So what we've developed is a system that uses a visual camera, camera in the visual spectrum. It's roughly comparable to the human eye in performance. Uh, human eye is truly a marvel of performance, so you know, it's comparable, it's not, it's not actually as good. But it looks in all directions at the same time, uh, it doesn't blink, it doesn't get tired. Um, so what we have is a system that can pick out uh, a little airplane, three nautical miles out. Uh, it can pick out a runway uh, about four or five nautical miles out uh, and it can position uh, yourself uh, by recognizing the landscape. Uh, so it can position yourself without using a GPS. It can find a runway without an ILS and it can find the targets, uh, the other aircraft in the sky without ADS-B. And it outputs very compatible signals which can then be shown on existing displays with minor modifications. Uh, the uh, Avidyne Vantage will be the first product line to have this. So we started about five years ago with the idea that it should be possible to bring modern AI and computer vision to safety critical uh, avionics, which um, is actually harder than, uh, than you think because uh, the certification process is not geared uh, towards this new type of technology. So apart from making the systems actually work, what we also had to do is develop the theory and the practice to take the regulators and show them the evidence. So getting it to work is one thing. You can probably get a couple of you know, post grads or students, you know, lock them up in a room with chocolate and coffee and they can make something work. But there are tricks, uh, you know, traps that you shouldn't fall into and before you know it you've made something where you completely lost the evidence. So apart from developing the system itself, what we have also spent at least half of our time on is uh, developing this process. First with uh, EASA and we're now also in talks with the FAA. Um, it's called a W process. Uh, it looks like the V uh, validation and verification uh, process from traditional systems but there's an extra hump in there when you go from the machine learning uh, to the real world and uh, so developing that process was uh, was a big effort um, and we think we are now the first company in the world that has uh, a, a credible story of how to get these systems certified so to answer your question we are in the development phase where it works <laughs> we have the evidence to present to the FAA and we are about to kick off uh, certification uh, trajectory with both agencies uh, together with our partner Avidyne who's providing the underlying systems. Uh, so I've started flying in uh, 2011 uh, actually in California in Palo Alto that's what, where I get my private pilot in helicopters and I was amazed from the first day how difficult and taxing actually it is to fly especially at that point okay we have hydraulics on the Robinson 22 but that was pretty much all the automation which was there I couldn't figure out what is Citabria there what is Cessna caravan over there so I had to go Google actually quite a lot after my lessons just to be able to orient myself in the new environment. And at that point I thought it would be great if some of the tasks were actually done by a computer who doesn't get tired and who can pay attention to everything. So now we're in the position when I can actually think about how our system can be used to rely upon in some difficult conditions, some emergency situations. So another example would be um, uh, not presented during this show, but totally on our roadmap, helping uh, helicopter pilots and generally single engine pilots find the least bad spot to land if you have an emergency situation or if you need to do a precautionary landing, for example. So I feel like I'm actually contributing to the safer flying of tomorrow. 
So now, obviously, as we are still going through the flight tests, and as our chief uh, flight test pilot also says, now we have to divide the attention between the actual flying task and monitoring how the system is working. And of course, we have dedicated engineers who do quality assurance and user experience um, with the systems which we develop. As a pilot, I'm very still interested in what the system is performing. But of course, all the time when I see how it works or how it doesn't work, I'm thinking about how we can, can be improved. And there are obvious things. For, so, for example, working close to the ground is currently not within the concept of operation which we are using to develop the product. However, it's totally something which we're going to do. So being able to hover taxi in the airport, for instance, or being able just to taxi on the fixed wing aircraft around the airport. Um, we have all the technical components in there. It's just a matter of uh, maybe extra funding and extra time. And we'll get uh, that capability out as well. Oh, so our company name is unpronounceable. However, if you want uh, to learn more, you would go to our website. Uh, you can see the link to it, for example, somewhere there. And uh, you learn from our blog posts and our press releases. And we have lots of videos which explain how the system works.